going on, guys? How's everyone's day so far? Mine has been good. It was very busy. Went to the farm this morning, did the typical harvest that we do on Thursdays now, so that was good. Did some kale and beets and carrots today. Oh, and a little bit of Swiss chard too, last minute. So that was fun. It was really nice to be outside. It's a beautiful day, which I was very much so debating on whether to just say, I'm not streaming today. I'm just going to sit outside, but... I still miss you guys, so here I am, ready to cook and teach you guys some new stuff. I also um, have destroyed my hands in the past few days. Got like a couple cuts and burns and I don't know what's going on this week, but it's been messy. <laughs> RIP hands, even though I need you to do everything. Okay, so menu today is Welsh food and this is for Buff Bagwell who lives in Wales and he requested that I make Cornish pasty on stream for him. So I thought that mushy peas would also be a good thing to pair with it since peas are in season right now for sure. We have some from the garden and some from the farm and then also just some fresh shelled English peas to kind of bulk it up. And then on the side, you typically want some kind of gravy to go with your Cornish pasty. This is, not everyone puts gravy with it. Like when I had it in the UK, I didn't have gravy with it and it was still really good. But I think with the peas and everything, the gravy would be great. So that is what is in the stove cam right now, is our beef bones that we have to roast off so that we can make our beef stock and then eventually make our gravy after that. And Sammy phoned me this morning on his way to work. And I was like, what's going on? And he's like, it's National Pecan Pie Day. And I was like, okay. Like I knew he was going to ask me to make it. I was like, so what does that mean? He's like, well, I like pie. I was like, so I guess I have to make a pecan pie then, which is his favorite, favorite pie. So we're going to bust that out today and stream as well. So we have a couple different pastries to make. The Cornish pasty pastry, say that five times fast, Cornish pasty pastry has to rest. So the recipe I have says it rests for three hours. That's a little bit excessive. So I'm going to push it and check it at like an hour and a half to two hours from when after we make it. So I don't think we'll be able to even wait that long for it to be cooked in the stream. And then we have to make the filling for the pasties as well. So I have some beef to slice up and I got a rutabaga, a carrot and potato to go inside. So we'll have to cook a little bit of that first. And that's it guys. The mushy peas will be probably the last thing we do and they cook up really, really quick. So pretty easy stuff today, I would say but a lot of different things going on. So I, I wrote out my little list for myself and let's do a little bit of fun facts before we start. What's up, Death? How's it going, man? So let's get into the pasty. So I had this when I was in the UK in a little town called New Key. It's spelled New Quay though, with a Q but they pronounce it Nuki. I found that out very fast. And I went to that town to do some surfing there. I really wanted to make sure I did some surfing in the UK while I was there because everyone says it's pretty great. And I did end up going out one time until it got super stormy and then we had to go back in, but a little bit of surfing is still better than none. Just chilling, playing Fortnite. Sounds good, dude. Hope all is well with you. And I forget how many pasties I got. I think I got three different kinds. Because you get really hungry after you surf. So I, they were pretty small, though. Like, around that size. 
I forget if I got, I believe I got some kind of beef one and maybe a chicken one and maybe a veggie one or something. I don't really remember, but I think if I looked back in my blog, I would know. Just didn't have time to really plan for that today. Okay, so a pasty is a baked pastry, a traditional variety of which is particularly associated with Cornwall in the UK. It's made by placing an uncooked filling. Okay, so it's not cooked. Wait a sec, how long do these bake for? 50 to 55 minutes. Okay, so we have to keep that in mind. I think I still wanna brown off the beef a little bit, but other than that, maybe let's do the beef and the onion together cooked because that'll just bump up the flavor a lot more can, instead of leaving it raw. Get a little bit of brown on there, but the potato and the turnip we can leave raw. But traditionally the filling is uncooked, so that's why it takes so long. Typically meat and vegetables, and it's you put it on one half of a flat short crust pastry circle. So the recipe for the crust is pretty similar to a pie crust, but it has a little bit more give to it. And then you fold that pastry in half and crimp the edges and it's gonna look like a calzone, but with a much, much different dough. And the traditional Cornish pasty, which since 2011 has protected geographical indication status in Europe. Okay, they're serious about their pasties. It's filled with beef, sliced or diced potato, swede, AKA yellow turnip or rutabaga, and onion. And then it's seasoned with salt and pepper and is baked. Today, the pasty is the most associated food in Cornwall. It's regarded as the national dish and accounts for 6% of the Cornish food economy. That's not that much. I don't know why they're like really proud of that percentage. 6%, yes. Pasties with many different fillings are made and some shops specialize in selling all sorts of pasties. Yeah, there's typically like I would say five or six different kinds to choose from. The origins of the pasty are unclear, though there are many reference, references to them throughout historical documents and fiction. The pasty is now popular worldwide due to the spread of Cornish miners, and variations can be found in Australia, America, Argentina, and Mexico. So the English word pasty derives from medieval French for a pie filled with venison, salmon, or other meat. Vegetables are cheese and then baked without a dish. Pasties have been mentioned in cookbooks throughout the ages. For example, the earliest version of Les Viandières, which means Old French, has been dated to around 1300 and contains several pasty recipes. So they are old. Okay, let's see if there's anything else exciting. So they took nine years campaigning throughout Cornwall to get the name Cornish pasty protected geographical indication. Nine years. They are very serious about their pasties. 6% would be approximately one meal out of every 16. So a once weekly dish. Oh, that makes sense, Snooze. So kind of like how some, some families have like one special dish every Sunday or something. That totally makes sense. Okay, that's that's a pretty good stat then. Especially if people like make their own, which I'm not sure of. 
Hey, Nokia, how are you? Okay. So let's get into pecan pie a little bit. And then we're gonna get started making our pie crust and our pastry crust, because those guys have to rest a little bit before we even roll them out. And whenever this oven beeps, I'm gonna put those beef bones into roast. So these are marrow bones. We got five pounds worth. So they're just on a sheet pan. We're gonna roast them till they're nice golden brown. That's gonna create all of the flavor that we want in our stock. What's my favorite flavor of pie? I would have to say strawberry rhubarb. What is yours? Am I gonna sear them, Lise? Well, we're gonna roast them in the oven, which is pretty much doing the same thing. It'd be very, very hard to sear the bone because it's not flat like a steak, which is why typically any bones for stocks are just roasted in the oven until they're nice and golden. But there are some stocks called white stocks where you don't actually roast the bone because you want it to be very light in color. But we don't want that today. We want a nice, deep, rich, and dark beef gravy. You like all types of pie. It's too hard to choose. Okay, pecan pie. It's a pie of pecan nuts mixed with a filling of eggs, butter, and sugar. Typically corn syrup, which yes, we are using today. Use the golden. Golden corn syrup. That's the good stuff. Variations may include white or brown sugar, sugar syrup, molasses, maple syrup, or honey. Oh, maple syrup would be delicious. I've never done that yet. I think I've only made one pecan pie before this one. And the one that I made, it had whiskey and chocolate chips in it. And it was actually really good. Holy smokes, lemon, how are you? It's been forever. Can you smear one with tooth toothpaste and make a nasty pasty for that one coworker? Never. Why would you mess with food like that? I could never do that to somebody. Matt, how are you, man? How's the week? So pecan pie is popularly served at holiday meals, and it's also considered a specialty of Southern America origin. Not South America, like Southern United States. Most pecan pie recipes include salt and vanilla as flavorings, which yes, those will both be going in today. Pecan pie. Remember when I asked if you were taught that eggs are cooked by sugar? It was during pecan pie making that you learned that. What? Interesting. Matt, work sucks. Would I ever eat human? I don't think that's a question. No, I would not. Okay, oven beat. So let's get these bones in. They will take probably around half an hour. So chocolate and bourbon whiskey are other popular additions to the recipe, which is what I did last time. And it was really good. Sam was like totally turned off of it when I first gave it to him when it was warm. But when it cooled off, it actually got better in flavor. He was like so offended though that I would mess with a pecan pie like that. He's like, I wanted regular pecan pie, not this. I was like, well, this is what you get because I made it. Yeah, everything is going really good. I'm like finally adjusted to my new schedule where it like nothing is really stressful anymore. I just kind of go through the motions and just enjoy everything. It's great. This week, like it hasn't been perfect. It, there's been some challenges, but I'm learning to just take them as they come and just deal with it. That's life, right? It's not always gonna be perfect. But you can't get down about that. Everyone loves singing in the shower until you get shampoo in the mouth. Then it turns into a soap opera. Oh man, Matt. So origin. 
Pecans are native to the southern United States. I did not know that. Archaeological evidence found in Texas indicates that Native Americans used pecans more than 8,000 years ago. The word pecan is a derivative of an Algonquin word, pecani, referring to several nuts. How have you been, Lemon? It's been forever. Did you do your baking contest yet? So sugar pies, such as treacle tart, which I have no idea what that is. It's a traditional British dessert, which is probably just filled with like a sugary custard. Do you know where a Cornish pasty comes from? Cornwall. Okay, so treacle tart were attested in medieval Europe and adapted in North America to the ingredients available. Pecan pie may be a variant of chess pie, which is made with a similar butter, sugar, and egg custard. You're all right, you did bake, but you didn't place. Uh, whatever, as long as you had fun doing it. That's all that matters. And plus it just makes you better. It's like some healthy competition, right? Okay, so some have stated that the French invented pecan pie soon after settling in New Orleans, after being introduced to the pecan nut by the Native American Quinnipissa tribe. I hope I didn't butcher that, but I probably did. Claims have also been made of pecan pie existing in the early 1800s in Alabama, but this is not backed by any recipes or literature. They're just like, yeah, we had those here as well. <laughs> Can you prove it? No, we can't. Attempts to trace... I don't know what's going on in the oven. Attempts to trace the dish's origin have not found any recipes dated earlier than a pecan custard pie published in Harper's Bazaar in 1886. So although there was like very similar pies, the pecan pie was never published until 1886. Good to know. Okay, that's it. Let's get into it. So order of business for today. We have a couple things on the list. We got some stuffs to do. So we're roasting the beef bones. Next up, we're gonna make the pie crust. And obviously the pie will be baked after the beef bones are done roasting. We'll make the pasty dough as well. And then we should be able to prep the beef stock by that point. So I have onions, celery, and carrots to go into there with the beef bones. And then we will top it with cold water. I'll probably put a good handful of mixed herbs in there from the garden. And then that is going to go for as long as possible, just a very slow simmer until we have to go make the gravy and then we'll strain it at that point. Nice to learn it's close to chess pie. I've also never made chess pie, but I'm sure I would love it. And then hopefully after our stock is going, we'll be able to make our pasty fillings. So like I said, we have to cut up some of the beef still. We have to cube it prep all the veggies and I think I would just want to quickly cook the beef and the onion before it goes in just because we are using brisket so I think like cooking for an hour in the pasty will not make it quite tender enough brexit means brexit sounds good space sounds good and after we make the pasty filling then we can roll out the crust for our pecan pie make the pecan filling, which shouldn't take too long, and then bake that pie. And then as that's baking, we'll roll out the pasty dough, fold them up with the filling in it, and then bake them. And then lastly, we'll make our gravy real quick and make the mushy peas. And we should finally get to 6 p.m. with all of that stuff. It's gonna be a busy one, I think, but we can stay organized. We already got one thing crossed off. 
and it's only 10 to 3. Sweet. Let me just post these two recipes I'm using today in Discord since I totally did not do that yet. So just the pie crust recipe and the pecan pie. And the pie crust recipe makes two pie crusts, which is totally okay. So I'll just split it off and make it into a nice little round and then we'll just wrap it up and put it in the freezer. So that whenever I feel like making a quick pie, I can just pull it out, roll it and make the filling. And that way it's a lot quicker for me. Hello, steampunk. How are you? I know, yeah, I was wondering where you were. It's like, she must be out of town. So Flexard won the apron, Lemon, which I doubt you've ever seen him in this chat, but he's actually my first ever sub to the channel that's like not my family, of course. So that's pretty cool that he won it and he's in Scotland. So I mailed the apron last Friday. It's supposed to take around like eight business days, so I told him that when he receives it, I would love to get a picture with him, with the apron. And he actually said he's gonna give it to his mom, which is great. So I'm guessing his mom does a lot of cooking or gardening or whatever she needs the apron for. So still waiting to hear back from that. It's in the mail. Okay, so first things first, we need two cups of flour and it says to sift it which sounds good to me. I'm gonna mix it in this big bowl just so I don't make a mess everywhere today with all of this pastry business. Yeah, glad to know an OG got it, exactly. Like he might not always be in the channel, but he's almost been there since day one. Steampunk, how's your day? I was just talking to one of the girls at the farm and she said she's going to give me an itinerary for Portland because she loves it so much. She's like, I have all of the good food places and beer places. I was like, I'm in. I am into it. I'm going to turn my fan on. It's starting to smell beefy already. Love it. And might as well open the window now. I was trying to keep them closed because it keeps it a lot cooler in here, but... We're cooking now. So next up we need two thirds of a cup of butter or shortening, or you could even do half and half. But I think I'm gonna save the shortening for the pasty dough instead. And whenever you're making some sort of short crust or pie crust, you always want your fats to be very, very cold because otherwise they will just melt into the dough and they won't create that flakiness. They'll just get really tough instead. So keep that in mind. Just gonna do a little measurement. It's hot. Oh, it is so warm here today, guys. Sammy said it was 27 where they were working, but I'm gonna guess it's like 22 here because it's always a little bit cooler where we're by the water. Yeah, it says it feels like 23 with the humidity. I almost just said, sorry guys, no stream today. I'm going outside to enjoy some sun. But then I was like, well, who's gonna make dinner then? Oh wait, I needed two thirds. But that's okay, because we can just create little cubes. Two thirds of a cup. You would love to see the list. A list of stuff to do in Portland, Lemon, because I'm gonna have Labor Day weekend off. So Sam and I are going to go visit Portland. We're gonna drive down and stay there from probably Thursday 
till Tuesday. Okay, here is our little butter cubes and I'm just gonna put the rest of this butter and actually the shortening too, just back into the fridge while we mix up this dough because they are two different doughs. They're not quite the same. Oh, of course, Steampunk. Yeah, I'm so down. I would love to meet my viewers. I think that's so cool. I'm really excited for that. Oh, Tig Girl knows too. That's great. Yeah, we should definitely, uh, we'll work something out. Hang out one day. I'm sure we'll have a blast together. Do I care what type of butter I use? Okay, so for the Cornish pasty, they actually call for like Cornish butter, which I have no idea what that is. And there's no way I would find that here. So I just always use unsalted butter. I've never used like a really, really fancy butter, at least not in baking. I've like used it on bread and stuff, but I guess I don't know the difference to be able to have an opinion on it. Mama, how's it going? How's the week? Hey, Vune. How's your day? I'm so open-minded. There's one thing I've learned in life is to just try and absorb everything. But like, obviously it's still good to have your own opinion. But at the end of the day, do other people really care? Not really. <laughs> That's the funny part. You're in Oregon. Are you pretty close to Portland? Just west of Salem. Like, would we be able to drive through where you are, Lemon? to get to Portland. Definitely not good on United States geography. It's still very quiet. So are you enjoying the peace and quiet though, Mama? You're just taking it all in. It takes you about two hours to get to Portland. Oh, that's not bad then. <laughs> Thunder, everyone's from Oregon. So now all I'm gonna do is just take the butter in my hands with the flour, that helps it not stick. We're just gonna mash it up into like little flakes. And I always like to do this by hand, but using a food processor does work a lot faster. But I don't know, I always just feel that. I need to, I need to feel what is going on here. I really like to work with my hands. Oh, it's south of Portland. Okay. Oh no, Vune. The internet's acting up. Hey, Rise. What's going on? Memorial Day you'll be in Portland, Maine. You still miss them. See, I told you you'd be missing them by the end. When it starts to get like weirdly quiet, you're like, I don't like this. Oh, she has to come for a sleepover. She's missing you guys. That's so great. we're almost there and then we can add some cold water and some salt and then bring the crust together and then we'll let it rest for minimum half an hour in the fridge you find crust making stressful you always feel you take it too far or not far enough you should just believe in yourself 
just be like, yeah, this is good. I've not really made too many pies, so that's why I feel like me doing it by hand is a lot better. So it's kind of sandy is how it feels. But obviously you don't really want to warm up the butter. I think that's good. And it shouldn't stick to your hands too much either. If you have really warm hands, doing this by hand is not a very good option. You don't want to melt that butter. Okay. Wash my hands up for a sec and we'll grab some cold water and the salt. We are well on our way. Oh, I have just destroyed my hands this week. I got two burns yesterday. I got two pretty big cuts today. Peeled the skin back under my fingernails, cleaning meat. Like every time I put my hands under water, it's just so painful. I'm a mess this week, guys. You even put the bowl in the fridge. You are an insane lemon. So one teaspoon of salt. You might overthink it a bit. <laughs> Just keep it simple. All will be well. So obviously you want really cold water as well. Ice water is actually the best. Once again, we don't want to melt any of that butter. Posh is cruising, I don't know why. Yeah, I'll be there Labor Day weekend. A fact about Cornish pasties, what is it? I love facts. Cornish miners used to stick pasties in their pockets to keep warm while mining. Love that. So good. Pumpkin pie thunder. I do love pumpkin pie. So we'll just add a little bit of water at a time. This says five to seven tablespoons. Onion camping. Yeah, we're trying to decide whether we want to Airbnb it or just buy like camping gear because it's probably going to equal out to the same amount of money the airbnbs aren't that cheap there so just kind of mix it with your one finger until you feel like it's coming together fun fact thunder's getting hungry already thunder we are just starting so we got some like sandy flowery bits down there still so just a little bit more Tin hot dogs. Man, are you the person that had tin hot dogs last time? And we were like, what is that? What am I looking for? All sticky? Yeah, so we're getting like some bigger lumps that are sticking together. But I think we've added enough liquid that we need to kind of pull these stickier wet lumps apart so that we can start to absorb in this more sandy mixture underneath. Yeah, I guess pie doughs are a little bit tricky. But honestly, I just go by the feel and the look of it. 
And you want to be really gentle. Because if you're really rough with it and you work it a lot, then you're going to get tough crust. That's not what we want. Maybe a touch more water just to get that little bit. You mixed them with chili. Oh, that would be not bad then. Friday. Whoa, it's Friday? Did I lose a day somewhere? It's your Friday. That's always a good feeling. It's like, haha, suckas. Everyone's got to work tomorrow, but I don't. Albus, making a burger because you can't cook. Well, what do you think making a burger is, silly? You're cooking right now. Okay, it's coming together. So this is where we're starting to create our little layers of flour and butter. I'm just pressing it down and flipping it just to get all those crumbs incorporated. But this feels very light, like regardless of the amount of butter we have in it, it's a really nice feeling dough. And you don't really want to work it until it's smooth. Just want to make sure that it's nice and moist. And it's not going to rest in this bowl because I'm going to reuse this bowl to make the Cornish pastry after this. So there we go. You can kind of see the flour and the butter separated and that's what we want. Maybe though, I think we should divide this into two right now and then I'll just put the other one straight into the freezer. And we always want to shape it into a round because that way when we go to roll it, it's going to roll into the rounds that you want to put into the pie pan. Screw going to work on Friday the 15th or 13th. Why did I say 15th? I know this whole week has been like very weird for me. It feels like a whole week of Friday the 13th. Okay, now we just want some saran wrap wrap that up and we'll put it into the fridge. You can see the more that I work with it, the stickier it gets. You're learning different techniques. Yay. I mean, I think it's good. I feel like I added quite a bit of water. I guess we'll see when I go to roll it out. I'd rather have it a little bit more wet and use more flour when we roll rather than having it too dry because then it will just fall apart. Pasties are thin pastry anyways. Yeah, I'm surprised how long you have to rest it for though. Yeah, the harder you work it, the tougher it gets. It's like making biscuits. You're always very gentle. Like, look at that. We're already creating that little layer right there. We can flatten it out a little bit too. Just make it easier to roll later on. I think before we start the pasty dough, I'm just gonna take a peek at the beef bones that are roasting. I hear them sizzling away. Not sure if you guys can hear that back here. Two deflated butt cheeks. I love it. <laughs> I think rolling it out between sheets of plastic before cooling would ruin it. 
Yeah, I think if we go to roll it out now, it's not going to turn out the same. So I think the gluten needs to absorb in all of the liquid. I don't know. I'm definitely no scientist. I've definitely not made that many pies, like I said. So this is just my own opinion. 15th century breast implants. Oh no. Pie dough, that's what they used. Terrible. And it's always pretty difficult to make pie when it's hot out too. It's always good to make it when it's cold. Oh man, these look really good. So I think they need a little bit. So let's do our pasty pastry. And then after that, we will put together a beef stock. So everything's going perfectly. Going as planned. Milf, how's it going, man? <laughs> Thunder. I know, that was a terrible image. Okay, so how many are we making today? Six and some, it says. This recipe will make six and some. But I need to type this. It says six and some. That's how they typed it in the recipe. Oh man, English people, you guys kill me. Six and some, so maybe let's say eight. <laughs> Delusional idiot, thanks for the 100 biddies. I hope your day is well. So for this guy, I really like this. Everything's weighed out. So we're gonna use a scale and it's all in grams, which is so, so good whenever you're making anything like pastry or baking involved. Yeah, English people. Those crazies, I love the way they speak. I have to say, when I was very close to Cornwall, they were so hard to understand. So 500 grams, it says strong bread flour because you need the extra strength in the gluten. So I don't have like strong bread flour. I just have all purpose. So hopefully this is okay. Six plus 900 equals some. Yeah, perfect. I'm in. 500 grams of flour. Almost there. Boom. Obviously we'll leave the flour out because we'll need it when we go to roll this stuff. And then two types of fat, so 120 grams of shortening or lard. Obviously the lard will have more flavor than vegetable shortening, but all I have is vegetable shortening. And then 125 grams of Cornish butter. I'm using Canadian butter. We'll see if that doesn't ruin it. But if it doesn't work out, we know what went wrong. I think this is just tender flake shortening. And it is quite a bit softer than butter when it's cold. Has anyone in here had Cornish pasties or any type of pasty? There we go. So it almost looks like two thirds of a cup, okay? Very close to the last amount of fat we used in the crust. Yep, 
You've had pasties from Tesco, and how were they? Were they satisfying? Rise all the time. Are you in the UK? You've never heard of them. You thought it may be the dough recipe that calls for hot water. No, it's not. Yeah, it's still cold water. Mama, you have them often? Nice. Yeah, I should have known that one. That's great that there's a bunch of you that have had it before. Okay, a tear. We need 125 grams of butter. Don't worry guys, I have another pound in the fridge if I need. Probably not authentic Cornish, but you found them in Michigan and Northern Minnesota. Well, as long as they were delicious, I think that all that's all that matters. Perfect. Look at that. Perfect amount of butter today. And we're not even going to wash my hands. And we'll measure out the cold water after we mix the fat in. So that stays really nice and cold. You're in Scotland. Oh, you're in Scotland too. That's awesome. They make them there a lot. You've not had them in ages, but you had them often ages ago. Yeah, they're so yummy. Steve, you're still alive, man. And gum, how are you today? I never asked you earlier. So look at how nice and soft the, the tender flake is compared to the butter or like you really have to work it. Greg's has a really nice variety of freshly made pastries. Oh, yum. Does this dough get fried? No, so it still gets baked. So it says this needs to rest for three hours, but I'm obviously not going to have enough time to do that. So hopefully it'll be good after, let's say, two hours. Because the pastries bake for like close to an hour. Because typically the mixture inside is not cooked at all, right? So the beef and the root vegetables will take quite a while. Greg's are okay, but homemade's better. I've never made homemade yet. So I'm really excited. We're having a pastry day. It was a really busy week. Yeah, it's been crazy for me too, Steve. I hope all is well with you though. Over in Saskatchewan. Okay, so now that we have our fats all broken up, just found a couple more bigger pieces. Now we can start to work it to that sandy mixture again. So you'll see the difference in this dough, I think, with the shortening and the butter instead of just straight butter. And I do find that using shortening or lard does make it a little bit softer and flakier. So if you can use the half, half and half like this, do it up. Everything homemade is better if you know how to make it. It's true gum. So, so true. But you know what? I feel like anyone would be able to make anything. Because a recipe is... It's just words. Like, if you can't follow instructions, then I don't know. I don't know how people can't cook. Elvin! Thanks, Elvin. I hope you have a wonderful day and maybe I'll see you tomorrow on stream. It's been crazy for me too. Gotta enjoy it though, guys. Breaking records for heat still, dude. That's nuts. We're pretty hot here today too though. It's uh, 27 in the city, 23 here. The water keeps us nice and cool. Harry! I 
Thanks for the host, Harry. Okay, I think we're good again. I don't need to break it up too much. Like, look at this handful. There's like different sizes of butter, right? Okay, now I will dump out this water. Weigh our cup. And then we need 175 milliliters. Oh wait, I'm not weighing the cup, it's in mils which actually is exactly grams with water. It's okay, Kate, you can do this. <laughs> That's called a dirt. Dirty dirt. I'm gonna make sure that my scale didn't turn off though, like that. Measure out the exact amount. 207. Too much. You made it to 42 Celsius with the humidity? That's crazy, Steve. I don't think Saskatchewan's supposed to get that hot. Okay. We are good. So now we can pour that in. And we need another teaspoon of salt. Thirty-three there in Portland. Wow, guys. Sprinkle the salt. Let me just peek in here. Okay, I'm just gonna turn that oven off because those are good. Just leave lumps of butter. Yeah, exactly. 35.5 there. Crazy. Twenty-five feels bad, man, yet. Yeah. It's true, guys. Things are weird there, no idea. I think it's just gonna happen more often. Every season seems to get like more extreme, whether it's like more hot or more cold in the winter. Like the fires and the floods, we just can't even keep up. And I can kind of just start to press it together because we can't add any more water. which this seems so dry, but that's fine. For this, I'm gonna follow the recipe. So maybe I will have to end up working it a bit more. If you feel like it's not absorbing, just break it back up into the chunks so that there's more surface area of the wet mixture. And you should be able to mix in the rest of that dry stuff. I also have like a little topic on food for thought. So at the farm, when we're doing harvests, we still have to be very picky with the vegetables that we choose to sell. And the amount of vegetables that get wasted due to like holes in them from bugs eating the leaves or due to the sizes not being like big enough or small enough, I guess, is insane. Like the amount of food that still gets wasted is just blowing my mind every time I'm there. It's like, we're just pulling up the beets and it's like, oh, this one's too small, Kate. Just uh, leave it on the ground, that's it. It's like, it's still usable even though it's not the same size as every other one. Just like the amount of food wasted in the world is like just bugging me. I don't know how we're gonna be able to fix that. 
I don't know, guys. I think we need just a touch more water. I don't want to overwork this at all. You've never thought about tearing up the big pieces? I don't know. My mind is crazy, Lemon. It flooded in swift current where your brother lives. Oh, I know someone from there. He's in a band. You actually might know him, Dylan Curry. We've moved away from natural food with blemishes. Yeah, everything has to look perfect or it's trashed. It's crazy. It's like all the Swiss chard that we are picking today for Whole Foods is like any Swiss chard that has holes in it you can't use. And it's like, well, I'm just going over these plants here and like almost every leaf has a hole in it. So I guess that's just going to go to waste, even though I would totally eat it. Okay, now we're getting into it. Do you agree with me on that lemon? Okay, I think we're good. Your brother's on the island at the moment. Oh yeah, he's doing that job here. Okay, so if we look at this, we can still see the separation of the butter and the flour. That's why it's kind of off colored. Oh, I was going to ask that snooze. I was going to ask if, like, if you guys see a blemished food in the store, do you automatically go like, oh, I'm not buying that. Like, that's not worth the money. Or do you automatically go to, like, the cheaper section of food that is discounted? Because you know it's just as good. That was kind of my question of the day. So we'll have that little discussion. Is like, ugly food needs love, too. It's not always about how it looks, it's just about how it tastes. Thanks, Rise. I think we were good. We just had to add that touch extra of water. But that could be like my location as well. It's like it's actually very dry here right now. So I may just have to adjust that because of the weather conditions. Oh, oh I didn't just enough. Okay, touch more wrap. One episode of Cops, he, a guy was caught dumpster diving. Like, why would they make that out to be a bad thing? Oh, if you go into grocery stores, garbage bins, you will find so much stuff that is perfectly edible. Like all of the baking at the end of the night. If they can't give that to a food bank, that just gets thrown out because they can't sell it. And I worked in a grocery store, so yeah, that blew my mind a lot. I was like, what do you mean we have to throw out all the bread? It just doesn't make sense.
That guy's gonna go into the fridge. Are you not allowed to take the unperfect grots home? I mean, I think that would just be unproductive. I don't know if I'm allowed to take that home, like, but I would have too much. Cause that stuff, like I already have that growing here. So I wouldn't take it. But like, why wouldn't they still pick it and just sell it for cheaper on the farm stand? I'm sure there would be some people that would be all over it. Like I would. Okay, we're clean. Always clean up before you start the next task, guys. Okay, into the fridge with this. And next up, we're moving on to our beef sock. So I'll take those bones out. Smells so beefy in here. I'm just gonna get some herbs. best buy dates aren't when food goes bad no not at all like i don't know if you guys throw milk out when it's at the best before date but we've had milk keep for like over a week after it's best before date and it's been totally fine so i think that matters like with your refrigeration and stuff there's so much fat on this tray we're gonna save it all and then we're gonna have beef fat, some beef tallow to use in something. So that will be a little bit of lard, I think. Actually, let me just show you guys. I know it's kind of risky, but I'll try not to spill. So obviously the marrow is pretty much all fat, which is why dogs always love it. Some restaurants that I've gone to in Vancouver, they use those beef bones after they've been cleaned up to put the bill in it. So they just like roll up the bill for your meal and put it in there. I love that. Am I allowed, was I allowed to take the food being thrown out? No, I wasn't. Cause I totally would have. That's why I like, <laughs> sad to say, but like grocery stores are the worst. So we don't have to peel the carrot, I don't think. Maybe I'll just give it a quick little wash. And everything for the beef stock can be cut quite large. We don't have to do like fine dice here. Just like a rough chop is great. Don't have to do anything for presentation. They started selling wonky fruit and veg there now. Nice. It's 50 pence cheaper than the store's own brand. See, that's smart. At least it's not getting wasted. Oh God, the onion. I got that today at the farm. It's just burning. And when I put the, the alcohol swab on it when I got home, just because I don't want like any infections. There is some weird stuff in the soil sometimes. Oh my God, the pain. give that food to the local food bank for people yeah exactly unless they do i mean i'm only there two days a week so i definitely don't see everything
It's just all flavor, the marrow. Yep. Such a win. Man, this one, I don't know why it hurts that bad. But this one has just, like, been hurting me all day since I did it. Tuli, how are you? Robin's chirping guys the smaller cuts and grazes are the worst I I agree with that so like I burnt my fingers yesterday and the whole time that it was singing I was like I wish I cut myself and I cut myself today and realized how much this little cut actually hurts oh no Just being lazy, truly nice. I'm just over here cooking some good food. Okay, those ones don't look very good. This is okay. Just cut the end off that because we don't know where it's been. Delusional, what? A thousand biddies. What is going on? Thank you so much. That is so appreciated. And you are on top this week. I don't think anyone's gonna beat that one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And hopefully you'll be able to request a meal for next week if you're into that. Should get it checked, Thunder. Nah, I'm good. Unless it starts being weird and like gets infected, then I'll check it. Paper cuts? Yeah, they're the worst. I mean, the other day at the farm on Tuesday, the soil was so dry that like my finger actually cracked in one of the bends. I was like, oh my god. Destruction this week. Okay, so gently move this. Let's get a big pot out. Gosh, what's up? I will put the bones in there. And then we'll put all the veg in and cover it with cold water. And I'll give Posh a little piece of this crispy meat if I can get any. Crispy beef fat. Are they baby birds? Well, they were baby birds. I think we had three baby robins, but they're all grown up now. Flying around being crazy and loud. I swear one was like fooling around with me the other day. I was outside in the garden doing some stuff. I could just hear like this rustling in the bushes just behind the fence. We have a chain link fence, so you can see through it. And I couldn't see anything, so I just like stopped. And I was right in the trellis that has the grapevine on it. And then all of a sudden, this robin just flies out like beside my head and like goes and lands on the fence and just starts chirping. I'm like, what the F is going on? 
Like, I actually screamed, and then I was like, I hope nobody saw that. <laughs> Screw it around with me. Rook, how's it going? Robins are a sign of good luck. They take really good care of the garden. They're always in there, like, picking for the worms and stuff on the plants. Yeah, they just taken over, 100%. <laughs> okay so herbs i always like to do parsley first and foremost and stock so i have a little bit here from the farm still we don't have to use this whole thing maybe we'll use half just finishing a 48 hour shift Rook. what is going on Working for the weekend or what? And now next up, let's do some time. We've got a little time for that. And maybe a little bit of rosemary. If I can find any. I think it's in the other bag. And that's really all I would do for herbs. Must be a resident in an ER. I don't think so, Armored. And what's going on? How's the day? Thank you. Uh, we're almost at this, this time to crack one of those margaritas again. I think I'm into it. That was really refreshing last time. And it's hot out. In dog, how are you? Everything's better with rosemary. Yep. Yeah, 48 hours, that's long. I think my longest shift ever was 18 hours. And that's when we uh, worked a night service in the kitchen and then just had a really big cleaning day at Christmas time before everyone went on holidays. So we just like worked a full day and then worked like another whatever amount of hours until the whole kitchen was cleaned top to bottom. And that way we would come back to a nice clean kitchen. 84 hours in four days is your record <laughs> how do you do it man how do you do it okay so now bring our pot over to the sink and cold water cold water will keep your stock nice and clear if you use warm water or hot water it's just going to bring out the impurities and it'll go a lot cloudier whoa That's the beef bone popping from the cold water on it. Like, what the heck was that? We're popping, guys. Just enough water to cover. It's okay if the herbs float right now. Because as they get soaked with the water, they will start to sink. So we can go like medium high to start with this. Even if you want, you can just kind of push them down. They will stay down eventually though. And now, since that beef fat is cooled off now, I think we should pour it into a container and then get rid of that pan. Sounds good, Steve. Have a good one, man. Hope to see you later. And we should definitely, definitely strain that fat if we're gonna keep it. That way it'll be nice and clear. Because if you have any browned bits, that can actually make it taste a little bit burnt. So whenever you're keeping a rendered fat like this, 
Always make sure you strain it. Treat it with love. I'm just trying to find the end of my cheesecloth here. I don't know where it is. I'm lost. I think this is an end though. So you can use a strainer or a cheesecloth, whatever you want. And I always find it's easier to take the amount you want and just twist it and then cut it. Oh, man, Rook, salary is the worst. I don't want to go on salary ever again. Just find that people just take advantage of you. It's like, oh, you're on salary. You can work as many hours as we need you to. Delusional, thank you so much. And you are blowing up today. That is very much appreciated. You really don't have to do that. But you know, every little bit helps to pay for ingredients and equipment. I hope I can give you as much as you have given me. Okay, we should be good with that. Salary is great 75% of the year. Okay, well that makes sense then. How long can you keep the beef at? I mean, in the fridge? Probably forever. As long as you keep it clean, that will last a very long time. Because fat has always been used for preservation. That's okay if that falls in. That's like one of the main preservation ingredients to use. Just even that out a bit. Oh wow, this stuff is so nice and yellow. And you'll even notice like sauces or soups that you make and put away that get like that little fat layer on them those will keep for a lot longer than if you were to skim that fat off so look at that like that just looks like nice clean oil right this is great i did not think i would get that much out of it hell yeah It's so clear. I'm so excited. Yum. So we could even use this later to mix with the flour to make the roux to thicken the gravy. So if you want like that beefy flavor, use beef fat. You're not gonna get any more beefy than that. But we're just gonna put that aside to cool for now. Armored, I did not do the pie yet. We made the crust and it's just resting. So our stock's going. Yeah, I think we can prep the pasty filling now. And that way maybe the beef and the onion can kind of cook out while we roll out the pie crust and then we'll fill the pie and bake it. So you didn't miss it yet, Armored. You're still good on that one. So what I have here is I just cut a piece off of a brisket that we got this weekend and it was a really big brisket. I think it was 15 pounds. So I cut off the flat end, which is a lot more lean than the other end, which is called the tip. So we're just gonna dice this up into probably Let's say one inch cubes, because they will shrink as they cook. Keep that in mind. Whoa. The bones are still popping with the water. I don't know what's going on. That's a meat mountain, Mike's side. I know, it looks really good. I would tip the plate, but got a lot of purge in here. Yesterday at work, 
I got to clean 78 flat iron steaks. I don't know if you guys have ever had flat iron, but they are so good. Some of them were so nicely marbled that it almost looked like Wagyu or Kobe. I was like, I would eat this one and this one. <laughs> Just like picking out all my favorites as I cleaned them up. It's a really, really nice color. All of the beef that we've gotten from the butcher shop we use now has been so good. Oh, and yesterday at work, we got in a half pig again. So I'm feeling like I'll be making some more charcuterie pretty soon. Just a, a casual half pig, just taking up like half of the kitchen. Does my work know I stream? They do. Yeah, Chef asked me before, he's like, how do I watch you? He's like, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> I was like, it's really easy though. I don't know if he's ever watched. He could definitely watch on Mondays and Tuesdays though. That's his weekend. And I would also still love to get them in here with me one day stream with some guest chefs yeah where is the other half I think it got dropped off at a nearby restaurant called the harbor house which is actually like a little hotel kind of oh I was supposed to put this in okay so I trimmed off the fat cap from this I did this earlier just because I knew we would be crunched for time doing the pie and everything. So I'm just gonna throw that in the pot and that's just gonna create some more flavor too. Typically I would brown this up and kind of render it, but we're not gonna do that stuff. I just totally forgot to put it in with the bones, but I think it would have made the kitchen way too smoky anyways. So we'll just put this on top of the herbs to weigh it down. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, yesterday when we got the pig in, the guy just had them in the back of his truck, like in the cab part, just opens up the cloth and there's like just this massacre of like half pigs in there. Chef's just like, holy shit, that's so savage. And so I'm like, what is going on? Because I was working in the back and I come and look and I was like, yeah, that's a little bit gory. <laughs> <laughs> just animals sawed in half then he brings in the pig with scott and chef's like okay you better get out of here before the health inspector comes like that's totally not sanitary like that's how it is on farms it's like you have to trust who provides your food right Would they allow me to do mobile and silent? Probably. I mean, the sous chef has never owned a cell phone in his life. So kudos to him. He's the same age as Sam. He's like, I've never had a cell phone. I don't want it. I'm like, dude, you have the easy life to not be connected like all of us. Just simple. And then the other guy doesn't really use his phone. Like the only one that uses his phone in the kitchen is chef. But I'm sure I could easily post up my phone if you guys wanted like an IRL stream of me in the kitchen one day. That could maybe be a Sunday thing. It's a little bit more chill on Sundays because that is the end of their week as well. That's not a knife, that's a sword. It's actually called a scimitar. And it's great for meat cutting as you can see. You need that length sometime with these bigger cuts. And the grains in brisket are very, very large. That's why it's a little bit tough to cut. Like if you've ever had a flank steak, you would know what I'm talking about. Like look how much you can see in the separation of all of those meat grains. Whereas like if you have a nice ribeye, you don't see any of that. But this meat is very flavorful.
apocalypse gear pretty much guys i am so ready like come at me zombies y'all got nothing okay we are good with that Let's wipe off our plate and now we're gonna cube it just make some room here <laughs> i think i maybe portioned out too much we will like set those ones aside and leave them for something else stew ish related and then these ones this nice thin part that's like the exact size that we want for cubes but obviously it kind of doubles up here so let's just trim cut it in half You thought it was pronounced scimitar? I don't know, is it? I've always heard scimitar. Scimitar. Way cooler. Yeah, it looks like corned beef, hey? Would be interesting to see a kitchen at work. You don't want to know, nah, it's super chill. There's just a lot of stuff that always goes on. There'd be a lot of stuff to look at all the time, that's for sure. Maybe even be a little bit hard to keep up. Yeah, we'll use this one too. Just trying to gauge how much I want here. And I guess if there's a little bit extra of the filling left over, I'm okay with that. It would just be kind of like a beef stew. Hey, okay, there's something tough there. And obviously be mindful of any silver skin or sinew that you find in here. You don't want chewy meat in your pasty. You want it to be pretty easy to eat with your hands. Not shimitar. Sh shmitar? Shmitar. Shmitar. I don't know, Rook. I don't know, man. I need to move these. They're slowing me down. Let's go. <laughs> You're just a redneck. Man, there is no redneck that works 48 hour shifts. Actually, that's a lie. Farmers work really freaking hard. You can't talk right away. What's going on, man? Skimitar. Did anyone just look up the pronunciation? <laughs> so that we can stop being hilarious and silly. Okay, our stock is just coming up. We want to watch it now because we don't want it to boil. Just a nice, slow simmer. You did armored. Yay! Now we know. It cuts so smooth, hey? Has anyone in here ever had smoked brisket? Like Texas style? Rook, I'm looking at you. So I know that's where you're at. Each bit looks like a tongue. It almost looks, yeah, like the side view of a beef tongue. If you were to cut it like this. Very similar. Okay, we did it. I think that's enough. I'm looking at this. It's like, do you think that's enough for eight pasties? Maybe we need a touch more. Maybe I will. Oh, we still have this one. 
and this one. Yeah, I think I'll be good with that. Smoked brisket. Yay, Indog, you have. I think it is probably my favorite thing to eat beef-wise other than a steak. Rise, smaller chunks, but I'm going to brown it up a little bit before I cook it or before I put it in the pasty. So it's gonna shrink. So you have to keep that in mind. Okay, we can get rid of our knife and our board. Moving on to the next step. I'm just gonna pack those away before we start. Freezer bag for the win. Equal potato and beef size, okay. I will keep that in mind. Thanks for all the pointers. You're gonna pack this nice and tight so that there's no air. You've only cooked three to four briskets ever. Your last one was amazing. I know, Sammy, every time he cooks a brisket on the smoker, it just gets better almost every time. I don't know how. Like, how is that even possible? Okay, so I think I'm going to use just my cast iron pen to brown this up. That way we get good heat. Maybe we'll even just use some of the beef fat instead of like oil. But first, I'm gonna use shallots in the filling. A couple of shallots. Oh, that one's a potato. <laughs> I was just going by feel. Lurk mode, sounds good, lemon. You normally do an eight to 12 pound pork butt. Yeah, it's much more forgiving, hey? We have the barbecue guru for the egg. So that way we can put the brisket on, let it kind of regulate and temp, and then still be able to like do stuff throughout the day without having to watch the smoker the whole time. Grub truckers, what's up guys? Thanks for the follow. I have watched your stream quite a few times and I have to say, I really love what you guys do. It's kind of my end game too, is to do a food truck. So I'm looking up to you guys. This shallot has seen better days. R.I.P. Shallot. R.I.P. Same with this one. What happened to these things? Where have you been? Yeah, that's great, guys. Our uh, little Twitch cooking community is slowly growing. Yeah, if the weather doesn't cooperate. I know we get some pretty good breezes in the backyard. It's quite open. That was definitely one of the main factors being in Vancouver as well. When we had the smoker on the balcony, good times. What happens if you fry the fat on its own first? Does the flavor intensify? I would say it would just burn, Rise. 
You can only cook a fat so long until it just wants to burn. You can't really reduce fat because there's nothing to reduce. There's no nothing with water in it, right? Okay, so we're gonna cut these in half to start. Yes, even the small ones. And then we'll just flip them over this way, cut side down. And then we're not gonna go too small for dicing. Let's do like maybe a third of an inch. And then just do nice little cubes. Whew, it's already pretty strong. My eyes. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how fast a smoker can rise in temp if it gets like a good amount of air circulation for some reason. Whatever it may be. I remember we were always pretty paranoid on the first couple of times that we used the smoker. I still get paranoid when Sam brings it up to like 900 Fahrenheit. <laughs> know why. And I think we'll season our beef as we cook it in the pan. I think that's a really good idea. Don't mind me, I'm just uh, crying over here. Getting emotional. Crying out of happiness, guys, always. Okay, let's turn this pan on. I feel like medium high heat. I think we'll let the beef brown for a bit and then put the onion in just so it doesn't burn. Just use enough fat to coat the bottom of the pan. Obviously, there is a little bit of fat in the beef already, and that will come out as it cooks. Okay, so next up for filling. maybe we won't do any carrot inside I don't know I think I still want to just for like the sweetness carrot potato I also had a little bit of this like sweet potato which I thought might be okay and then here is our little rutabaga I'll do like a couple of the sweet potatoes and a couple plain potatoes Maybe that's enough. I think so. So we can start with the baby potatoes and then we'll have to peel everything else. And also keep in mind, if you're gonna let these sit for a little bit, they will oxidize pretty quickly. So you may wanna keep them in cold water until you fill the pasty. Effing love turnip. I really like turnip as well. Like all the different kinds of it. Oh, there's our stock. So let's turn this guy way down. It's just come up. And we're just waiting on our beef fat to come up to temp. And we'll probably do it in a couple batches, just so we don't overcrowd the pan. So maybe I'll just put that bowl over here. Okay, so 
rise said cut the veg the same size as the beef. So I think maybe having these is the best way to go. We'll do it halved lengthwise as well. Make it smaller. Maybe we will quarter them. And then probably cuts of three. So you can get nice little wedges like that. Guys, I didn't cry from the shallot. I'm shocked. Shocked right now. What do we got for time? 411. It's margarita time. Anyone have some drinks going right now? Or am I rolling solo? I mean, it is Thirsty Thursday. Like we need a reason though, right? <laughs> I think the dog is coming down either because she knows it's her dinner time or she knows that I'm going to cut carrot. Hey, Panda. Okay, sounds good, Rook. Have a good walk with Pendleton. Love that little guy. Panda, how's it going? Okay, so since I think I should feed Doggo first, let's just turn our beef fat off. Otherwise, it will start to smoke. I'll be back in, let's say, a minute or two. Just got to give the dog her food. It's past her dinner time. And then we'll carry on with our prep. I think we're doing good. We need the pasties in the oven by five. So let's keep that in mind. I don't know if we'll be able to do everything today. I don't know if we'll be able to bake the pecan pie on stream. Okay, let's turn this guy back on. It's still hot. Let's just get our oil evenly over that. And I'm going to grab a splash guard. These things are so handy to keep the oil from going everywhere. in a handful. We'll do this in two batches, I think. And let's just use the slotted spoon so that we can keep most of the fat in the pan. Nike, how are you?
And like I said, we'll season it in here. So just salt and pepper. Very, very simple. Continue on with our veg prep. Get our peeler. Yo, fruit fly. Get out of here, bruh. Got some bad juju. What the heck happened? I'm having a friend coming over tomorrow morning and blessing the apartment and sage it. Get this out of here. Love it. Yeah, I have a couple of uh, sage sticks as well. I never did it for this place though yet. Because last time I did it in our apartment, sounds like that is the worst smelling thing ever. I was like, we got to get rid of all the bad vibes. If it works though, I have no idea. But I like the meaning behind it. And I kind of like the smell. Okay, there's our sweet potatoes. Let's do our carrot. And now the rutabaga. I don't know if we'll need the whole thing, but that's okay. We are gonna use this again tomorrow. Cook some food from Eastern Canada for one of my viewers. Oh God, I just put my finger in that. Did not see that coming. That's the worst. Putting your, your finger in something mushy and not knowing what it is. <laughs> what was that? Get a little stir on this. I'm doing good, Nike. Yeah, that sucks that you got some bad energy there. I hope you deal with it. Where is everyone? I don't know. A lot of people are lurking. I mean, there are 30 of you in here, which is like pretty typical. It's been pretty quiet though so far. Matt was in here. I think he uh, left work though. He must be on his way home. It's funny how I like start to know your guys' schedules. <laughs> You're sitting at work trying to not just lurk, see? Kudos to all the people that watch while they're at work. That is freaking awesome. You've seen doors opening, clothes be been touched and seen things thrown. What? That would freak me the F out, I would move out. I am not good with that kind of stuff. My mom has a couple stories of like paranormal stuff from when she was younger and it freaks me out. Like I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. Okay, so carrots cut close to the same size. So 
We don't want the filling to just turn to mush as it cooks in the oven. We want everything to be cooked perfectly. Burn down the house. Yeah, exactly. I would be out of there so fast. Oh my God. What is going on here? I think I got some bad juju. All I did was peel the potato. <laughs> Everything's turning to dirt. Okay, what's going on in here? Dang it. So we overcrowded the beef pan. It's not really browning like I would like it. It's like drawing out more moisture than I wanted. So it'll have to cook for just a little bit longer. Which I'm okay with anyways since it is brisket. He ain't scared of no ghost. We need a ghost buster in there. You say the same thing for gigantic spiders. That is one thing we have here. Very, very large spiders. But I've gotten used to them. And I realize that they actually do more good than harm. So as long as I don't see them in my house, I'm okay. They can live freely outside. Ah, I just got goosebumps reading that too. You heard it say your name? You're gonna join a paranormal group. I mean, that's pretty cool, but I don't think I would be able to deal with it. Yeah, how did they learn your name? Ah! Okay, here we go. Now we got our brown in action going again. On to our rutabaga. Oh, she's a hard one. Oh God. I think I'm only gonna use half. And it's so hard that you need to help your knife cut through it. Tom, how are you? <laughs> Just start messing with it. Be like, that's not my name. How dare you? Doggo, what she need? Need something? I don't know if she eats rutabaga, but I will give her a little carrot. Okay, come here. I think we're gonna switch out our beef here. Yes, we are. So I'll put in the next batch. We're making that good old meat caramel again in the bottom of the pan here. Well, Tom, getting ready to make some Cornish pasties. She kept busting out in hives. Weird.
salt and pepper again. I think we may just need a touch more fat in the pan as well. It'll be one year. So when did all this stuff start happening? Eight to nine months ago, wow. You guys have been dealing with that for quite a while then. Good for you for sticking it out. All right, here's all of our raw veg to go into the pasty. I'm gonna put that away. So we're just waiting on that to cook. And then our next step is going to be rolling out the dough. So we're gonna do the pasties first because we're not gonna have time to cook the pie. <coughs> Sorry, a pepper was tickling my nose. I tried to stop it, it did not happen. So clear this area off. Say goodbye to our cutting board, we don't need it for the moment. Get a stir on this. And I think I'm gonna throw our salad in. Since the beef is like half cooked. Give that a good stir. Now that smells delicious. dandy rolling pin yeah if you're not moving then something's gotta go that is your home the spirit can live wherever it wants hey here is our pastry crust and let me wipe off this counter because you know doggo just had her freaking paws up here that's okay though because i taught her how to do that got some soap on here gotta work clean guys bucket over and so what did this recipe say six and some pasties so I don't know what that's supposed to mean let's do eight and see how big they are so it says roll out the pastry so we'll just do one big roll I think it's gonna be pretty big it's probably gonna take up almost this whole area and it says use, cut into circles approximately 20 centimeters in diameter. So it says a side plate is an ideal size to use as a guide. What's in the big pot to the left? So that's our beef stock that's cooking. Actually, let's try and push this fat down. Now that the herbs have absorbed the liquids. So it's beef bones that we roasted earlier, carrot, onion, celery, parsley, thyme, rosemary, and that's it, and cold water to cover. Let's unwrap our 
short crust. It feels good. It doesn't feel too soft. I wish Buff was in here right now with us. This is who I'm making it for. He could give me all the pointers. I may actually just send him a quick message on Discord to let him know that I'm doing his food today. Buff Bagwell. Got a good sprinkling of flour because you definitely don't want this to stick. Flour on top. I'll just finish off over here. And just keep that handy in case you need any flour. Beef and our onions are done. We're going to turn that off and get it out of the pan. Because for us to fill the pasties, we can't do hot filling. Everything needs to be cooled down or else it'll just start to melt the butter out of the crust. <clears throat> we have half an hour to get these in the oven. I think we can easily do it. Armored is going to be sad that he won't be able to see the pecan pie at the end of the stream. I will post a photo though after we bake the pecan pie. So this is what that looks like. It's like so beefy. Delicious smelling. I'm just going to take this pan off the heat it's super hot. It's a little wipey wipe. Let's go, guys. So start in the middle and work your way out. Hopefully it doesn't fall apart. So it doesn't say how thin to roll this, is what I'm kind of concerned about. Rise, are you still in here? You know how thin you typically roll out the pastry? The pastry for the pasties? Let's just check real quick that it's not sticking. So you can see there, it's not really floured. It would be a shame to roll the whole thing out and then have it stick to the counter. So it's always good to check every little while. the room. I said it would almost take up all the space.
<laughs> this is craziness. Definitely want to try and keep it. Oh no, as even as possible in thickness. I think that's good. If we get six, we get six. Let's hope for eight. Literally taking up the whole camera screen. I think they'll be pretty big though. So I'm just hoping that I am able to get the six out of this. Roll out this corner a touch more. think we can do it guys. So I'm just going to use a paring knife and just trim around the plate. Okay, we're not even in in the screen anymore. want to try and do them as close together as possible just so you don't waste any dough. I have baker's hands. I have really big hands like for my size and I think that's really useful for me since I do work so much with my hands. Oh my gosh it's perfect. So pumped. You always wanted to be a baker and bake bread all day. That is honestly what I want to do, Thunder. So like for our food truck, Sammy will make the smoked meats and I will bake the breads so that we can make the sandwiches with the smoked meats. Okay, so we might just have to kind of push together the remaining dough to make the sixth one. Looking a little tight. She's a wee bit tweet. Bake le croissant with le butter. Exactly. I don't know if I would fool around with croissants though. They're a lot of work. I'm totally down with like sourdough and stuff. I think if we've just flour these and kind of stack them on top of each other, that will work. So we get a little bit more room here. You wanna make pan dolce. I still have to make that thunder. It sounds so good. Okay, so now bring this over. Hopefully roll it out evenly to fit that one last one. So it is a little bit thick right here. You have white rice, codfish, and fried sweet plantains. That sounds good, Liz. Yeah, sharing is caring. Mm -hmm. 
Did you make all of that? <laughs> You're an only child yet. You don't gotta share. Okay, that emote that you used just now, Liz, looks exactly like one of this, these guys that I used to work with. And it freaks me out every time someone uses it. It's like, is that Josh? It's so weird. I don't know if we'll be able to sew this up. But we can easily get another one out. What do we got for time? 440? Hmm. Well, I know it won't take me long to crimp them. Oh, this piece is nice and thick. Kind of make a circle that we might be able to roll together. But I think I just used too much flour on it to be able to do that. shall see my friends bachelor how's it going man how's life <laughs> kate what are you doing let's just do this way easier to just do this and roll it out again don't be like super rough with it you just need it to form a ball again heating it up with your hands You knew a Josh, he used to buy you candy. Yeah, a literal sugar daddy. But keep in mind, if you roll this out again, it will be just a little bit tougher than these ones, just because we reworked the dough. Life is amazing. That's good to hear, man. Franken pie, exactly armored. And look at how much more tough it is to roll out, how it's kind of like seizing up. I think we'll still be good because I can still see the layers of butter in here. And at least we didn't have to waste it all. But we do still need to get it to the same thickness as the other ones. It wasn't working at all, Thunder. But I hate to like overwork the dough like that. I hate to kind of smash it together. Because then you're just overworking the gluten. That gluten. Okay, I think we're here. Yay. I think that's why it said and some. Because you get these weird little ones, right? That are kind of sewn back together. Do we dare try one more? Or do we think that it's just going to be too tough? Maybe we shouldn't even attempt it. Because if you make the pastry too tough, it's just going to kind of seize up when it bakes. Okay, we're calling it quits. We got six. That is great. I think I might just fill them on here since we already made a mess. An option. And maybe I'll just put the sheet pan beside me because that's what they're going to bake on. Nike, you're back. You love showers too? Just like Liz. So it says glaze with egg and or milk. Bake at 165 Celsius for 50 to 55 minutes. So I'm guessing a parchment lined sheet pan is what we need. You would think the recipe from the Cornish Pasty Association would be like a little bit more involved. But I guess not. 
And I'm guessing we'll have to use two pans. I don't know if we'll get all six on one. So check out the beef fat already, guys. Look how quick it's uh, solidifying, just sitting out at room temp. Craziness. So here is our raw veg that we'll just take a handful and put in each one. Make sure it's even though. And then our beef and onions, which let's just mix up a little bit. And the beef is already seasoned, but we still need to add just a little bit of seasoning for the veg. Let me taste this. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Oh, you didn't scare me, Mikey. I think that's really cool. Like, I never really believed that stuff. Okay, first pasty. So we only want to fill half, right? Because we have to flip it over. Siri thinks I'm talking to her, but I'm not. It's actually a little bit tough still, Nike, just because it is brisket. Am I a little bit worried about how it's going to cook up in the oven? Yes. I don't know if an hour will be enough. So handful of our veg. Let's get one more carrot in there. Obviously we can't overfill this. Maybe I prepped up a little bit too much veg. Still need enough room for the beef. Good portion like that, I think. It's trying to run away. for the crimping. They don't use any liquid to crimp, which makes sense. Sorry, I should have moved that back, but this is sticky on the inside because we didn't flour that part. And it will stretch a bit as you crimp, so don't be too scared. If you find that it's a little bit too full, just, just take a little bit out. Okay, that looks good, it will stretch. And now to crimp, this is the fun part. So press down your first edge. Let me see this. Actually, we're gonna press it all down first. That initial seal. Ten to twenty minutes in the shower. I always do like really quick showers, like probably ten minutes, I would say. And all we're gonna do is keep folding this on top of itself. So we don't have very much to crimp down. I think I might just grab a little container of water because the outside is a little bit too floury for it to stick to itself. Just to dip my finger to kind of seal it. Because you don't want it to come apart like that. So take it, fold it up there, and just keep doing that. It's very, very similar to a calzone. I don't know how they get it so nice, though. <laughs> it's my first one, guys. It's a no judgment zone. Showering with a bucket ain't fun. Oh, shit. We might have made a little hole. 
My favorite shower. Okay, I have two favorite showers that I've ever used. One of them was in Thailand. It was on this really, really small island called Copenhagen. And all of the showers were outside. It was so nice and peaceful. Okay, there's our first pasty. But we guess what? We forgot to season the veg, so this one's gonna be bland. Sorry to whoever gets to eat this. <laughs> okay, next one, let's pay a little bit more attention. I don't know if we need to roll it out thinner. I don't think so. And then the other favorite shower that I had was the bathroom in Bali. So the floor of the bathroom was all rocks, really nice, smooth rocks. And then just over top of it was like just a wooden plank that you could walk on. And then you went in the shower with that. But I don't know how sanitary the wood would be in a bathroom. Like, I feel like it would absorb a lot of bad things. Okay, there we go. There's our seasoning. The dough won't rip. Oh, it might rip. You're waiting for my travel show. I really, really want to travel again. I'm missing it. I was talking about that with one of the girls at the farm today. It's like, I haven't done a lot of traveling since I've been with Sammy because, like, we're settling down, right? But before I was, like, super free. I traveled a lot. And that's okay. I'm glad I did it while I was younger because a lot of people regret that later on in life. I feel like we just need water to seal this. We ain't got no time to waste with this BS. We're on a time crunch. And can someone please convert 165 Celsius to Fahrenheit? While I have my hands super messy. Oh my God, please don't rip. I did put sweet potatoes, Nike. Yeah, I was like in the, in our cold room, looking at what we all had to use. I was like, oh, I think sweet potatoes would be really good. So there we go. Rook just said hi to himself. Should we be worried? Nah, you're good. You're good, vegan. How's it going today? Oh my goodness. Maybe it's a good thing Buff is not in here. He'd be like, what are you doing right now? I'm sad. It is ripping. It does not look anything like what they've made on the recipe, but I followed all the instructions. I hate when they do that. Like this one's just gonna look like crap. 329 Fahrenheit. That is not high at all. Okay, thanks guys. But I guess you need it pretty low to be able to cook the pastry with all the filling in it. Call my show Kate's Unexpected Journey. First episode, Sammy shows up at the door dressed as Gandalf. Love it, Thunder. I am in. This is bad. What not to do on Cook with Kate. I think I'm going to roll this one out a little bit more. to solve the problem. Just make it bigger and then we won't overfill it. 
I think I need thinner dough. You ha gotta go get that dough patching kit. All the glitter, thanks for the follow. Welcome in. Oh God, four minutes. We're not gonna make it. Okay, so the recipe said 50 to 55 minutes. Should be okay. If we gotta push the stream back, then that's what happens. over here and maybe a little bit more flat we'll figure this out we've only done half so far but dang this stuff is not easy shout out to all those peeps that make cornish pasties on the daily i don't know how you do it Like my patience is getting thin and I'm a pretty patient person. Wait, is my patience getting thin or is my dough just too thin? I don't know. We're lost in the pasties. Send help. The jagged edge is cutting through. It's true. It's true. Honestly, I'm blaming the recipe though. Because the instructions were not very clear at all. I'm just using my basic cooking techniques to work through this. No, I didn't boil them because it says everything that goes in the pasty is raw. But I was like, there's no way the beef is going to cook in 50 minutes. Okay, this one looks better. We're getting there. <laughs> Look at this. What a POS. Okay, first three are done. We just have to uh, glaze them with an egg wash. It was the recipe's fault, always blame you can't control <laughs> yeah turnips sweet potato and potato and carrots apparently rutabaga is very popular in the Cornish pasties yeah ugly food needs love too Okay, we're getting a little sticky though. Okay, next. Honestly guys, I thought these would be a lot easier to make. I was like, oh, Cornish pasties, simple, easy mode. It's just pastry and filling. It's never that easy. I think the one layer thing is working really good. Tara, how are you? That's what he said. Yes, Liz. Thought it'd be easy. It's never that easy. Bam. Oh God. Take those ones out. Yeah, it's totally the jagged edges of the meat. Maybe that's why they cook it raw. Maybe I just straight fudged it up and like chose the wrong cut of beef. Gonna dye your hair back to blonde, fun. 
Oh, I was supposed to book freaking a hair trim for tomorrow. Gotta trim the mane, guys. Am I gonna brush the outside with butter? It's not gonna be butter, it's gonna be an egg wash. So whipped egg and milk. Go short. I haven't gone short in so long. I don't think I want to. Just because of the weather here, it would be too hard to manage it with it like being really short. Just because my hair is so curly. It would just be a pain in the ass. It would always fly in my face. You're gonna dye your hair to extra toasty cheese it color. Oh my goodness. Don't do it. Rook, you, you tried that technique on your deep dish? Whoa, did you try and like put cheese in the crust or something? No, that's just the crazy robins that we have. I like to sit on the butterfly bush and just chirp for God knows why. Like literally outside the window. Just sitting on the top branch, just being like, what up world? just on the edge, nice. Yeah, it's weird how when it bakes up, you kind of lose that nice crimping. And mine is not even that good. But practice makes perfect. Okay, maybe that'll be good. Literally had flashbacks of your hamster. Oh, he died last year. R.I.P. hamster. He chirped kind of like that. Yeah, guinea pigs and hamsters are super cute. Oh, I feel like this one's going to be a good one. But maybe I shouldn't speak too soon. You're growing your hair, Tara. It's always fun. And I suppose we should uh, heat our oven. 3.30. I'm gonna go 3.40. We're gonna push it. You would take the one with the hole in it. Thanks, Nike. to like cut your ends when you're trying to grow out your hair because otherwise they just get too dry and they break off anyways and then you just end up cutting more off when you go in the next time but I guess everyone's hair is different the last one look at we have so much stuff Prepped extra. Should have done like a double batch of pastry.
An inch a month? That's pretty good. Hmm. We almost forgot to season our veg again. My veins, yeah, I'm s super vascular. I don't know. I've always been that way, though. Don't you even do this to me, beef? Why are you beefing with me? I got beef with my beef. Crimping needs improvement. Now I can see why everyone just goes and buys Cornish pasties. Because one, they're not even expensive. And two, they're just a pain in the butt to make. Okay, last one. That's what I have left from what I pressed. I feel like a little slow cooker action is going to happen tonight. So that we have lunch for tomorrow. Okay, just getting a little wash on my hands. And we'll do our egg wash. And these should be able to go in. And then I think we will roll out our pecan pie get that prepped up so I can bake it after dinner. Because all we have left after this is the mushy peas, which is so, so easy. I think they'll take around maybe 10 minutes to do. Like literally just peas mashed with butter and seasoning. Bam. I have made a mess today. And I am okay with that. vegan gelato you can't grow a beard just a mustache and the lamest goatee ever <laughs> oh god you shave like three times a day yeah the more you shave the thicker your beard's gonna be I don't know when Sammy's gonna grow his oak. He can't really grow it out with the work that he's doing now. I think he's a little bit sad. He has a pretty epic beard. Rub balls on your face. Will that work, Thunder? That's the secret. Okay, there's our egg whipped up. Still have a little bit of yolk. You want this to be really smooth, and then I'm just gonna add. I think just a touch of water in here to just thin it out. And now pastry brush, which this one is stupid. Do these even work? I don't think so. I 
And then this egg wash is gonna help the pasties brown up really, really nice in the oven. Get that nice golden exterior. So this is an important step, don't skip this. And obviously you wanna be pretty gentle just to make sure you don't tear the crust. Do I like bearded guys? Yeah. As long as it's like trimmed up nicely and stuff. I don't like scraggly, gross looking beards. It's like, it's gotta be well kept. I know pasties, everyone's like, what? Making nipple covers today? <laughs> Why are they not in the shapes of stars? Hey fam, how are you? Oh, perfect, there's our oven. Hey Rush, I just saw you popped in here. I almost missed ya. How's it going? Doing good, I'm struggling a little bit with this, I think. But I think it could also be a lot worse than what this looks like right now. Yeah, you need that laugh, Nike. We get those good vibes rolling again. I am good, fam. All is well over here. Just making some stuff that I've never made before. We're on an adventure. Yeah, I don't get these silicone pastry brushes. I think the, the natural ones are just so much better. The pasties look good. Thanks, Rush. That means a lot, except for this one. I think that was like the second one we did. You gotta make those mistakes before you get better, right? Yeah, that one's yours, Nike. You can have the discard. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna set our timer for 50 minutes and see what is going on at that time. Say goodbye to the pasties. Usually they're the best ones. That's true. That is true. Actually, maybe we'll do 25 minute so that we can rotate the trays halfway through. Because that's important, even cooking. And I'm just going to quickly go to the bathroom and then we will finish up. We always called them pasties with a short A like apple. Pasties. Ah! And I've been saying it wrong the whole time. Cornish pasty. Who knows? Uncle Stinky, how are you? I will be right back, guys.
jokes. Okay, so a little bit of cleanup first. Pasty. Pasty. <laughs> That's why you were giggling. Leave it up to me to do the crazy stuff. As long as I'm entertaining, that's all that matters. I'm not ashamed. No, no, they are called pasties. Vegan gelato. They totally are called pasties. Pasty. Cornish pasty. To me, that doesn't sound as good. <laughs> Cleaning all the flour off. Clear the area. Well, thanks for the pointer, fam. At least uh, one of us knows what's going on in here. <laughs> Dreams been still having a good time. Okay, just one more little wipey wipe, and then we can get our cutting board back in here. Mm -hmm. Just it would be too slippery if we left all this flour underneath. Yeah, you. Let's get into the peas. So we made our pasty filling, rolled out the dough, folded them, and they are baking. So we have to make gravy still from the stock that's cooking on the stove top. Make the mushy peas. So I do have some peas to shell, so let's do that first. And then if we have time, we'll finish off the pecan pie. But if I don't finish it off on stream, I'll make sure that I post some photos on Discord of maybe the process and the end result. How does that sound, guys? I knew it was going to be tight to squeeze in. But as long as we try, that's all that matters. I am on Insta, Nike. I am. You should check it out. I think you would really like it. There you go. It's going. You're hitting a wall. Don't give up. Even though it seems slow, as long as there's like just that little bit of growth, every day you're good. Any more duck eggs? Speaking of duck eggs, Bachelor, I just picked some up today. But they only had one and a half dozen. So I got two dozen chicken eggs as well. So here's our shelling peas, is what they're called. These ones are from our garden. It's running away. And then I also have these guys, fresh shelled English peas to kind of just supplement. And you do get a lot of waste. So I think I'm just gonna take out a compost bag now. Since my compost is pretty full already. You're just trying to figure out what to do to keep things interesting. Fair enough. Yeah, it took me a while to kind of figure out as well. Yeah, peas. So there's that. I guess I should get a bowl, hey? Otherwise, they're just gonna be running everywhere. The 
green peas in a Red Bull. Okay. Let's taste it first off. See what we grew. Actually really nice. Not as sweet as the ones that I've tried at work though. Yay, Nike. Thanks for the follow on Insta. I really do enjoy Instagram. I think it's a great outlet. And I really do love to take food photos as well. Hi. Thirsty Thursday? Yeah. What's this? Strongbow, ginger, mm. or dry pear. Tastes good. Yeah, this is ginger. That's really good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Betty brought me a Strongbow ginger flavored. Good thing I didn't crack that margarita then, guys. Has it been fluted? Yeah. Yeah, I don't do much on Facebook nowadays either. I, uh, I set up like a page and stuff for the Cook with Kate, but people don't really interact on there at all. So I kind of just gave up on it. So it was just a waste of time for me to try and post on there as well. But I mostly stick to Instagram. Lido, how are you? Yeah, even though it's the same company, right? I mean, I'm still a little bit upset at how they changed Instagram and like how the photos show up on your feed, but I got used to it. Yeah, Doggo shows up for the peas, but not the steak. What is going on? I can just give her one of these whole and she'll just eat the whole thing. You want a pea? She loves peas. He's a vegan Labrador. She's a vegan Vizla. She's crazy. She loves to go in the garden with me because I just always kind of like give her a little bit of snacks as I harvest in there. She loves the kale ends. So like the stem part that we have to cut off anyways. So I always give her that. And typically, if there's any strawberries, I'll give her some whole. And peas are always good. But we're not into the carrots yet. I feel like I'm at work. I shelled so many peas yesterday and fava beans. But it's that season though, right? The sounds of her eating right now, I can't handle. You can't do the shell, girl? Sammy? Mushy peas sounds delicious. I don't think I've ever actually made it proper. Wow. Sammy's home. Posh is distracted. Go get Sammy. Oh, God. She, she loves Sammy more than anyone. My dog seriously loves my boyfriend. <laughs> She's like, I'm back. You got any more peas? The garden is so much fun, Nike. Do you not have any property to be able to grow a garden? Okay, into the peas from the farm. They're really small. The pods are really full though. There's that. 
funny. I'm funny? You were there packing your lunch with me. Well, you put orange juice in it. Gotcha. We just opened up and was like, well, you're new. Uh, we have salad and risotto and no forks. <laughs> and I was like, where are we going for lunch? <laughs> you need a permit to grow a garden in America? You need a permit to sell lemonade to barbecue. What? That's insanity. No wonder that country is sad to say, but messed up. That doesn't even make sense. Why would you not be allowed to grow your own vegetables? Monsanto owns everything. Yeah. You want to grow veggies to sustain and cannabis for pain. Love it. This is definitely a labor of love. Sammy, the crust is made for the pie, but I haven't had time to put it together. I'd have to bake after dinner. Sorry. Dad, you're at that. He's like, pie! <laughs> we actually get pie today. Yeah, I want to grow to sustain myself, exactly. The pecan pie is my favorite, so you know that. It's true. You guys heard it here first. Look at this little pod. Perfection. You're pretty much allowed to do whatever you want here, guys. It's like you can have any animal you want on your property as long as you take care of it. And two and a half months we can grow wheat. Yeah, and then two and a half months we can grow weed if we want to which we obviously will taxes were never introduced until the 1930s six jobs <laughs> Do we occasionally eat at Panda Express? I don't know if I've ever eaten there. By the way, cheers guys. If anyone's drinking with me. I have heard of the Boston Tea Party. Okay, what do we got? It's 5.30. Okay, we're good. I'm only gonna worry about the peas for the rest of the stream and the pasties. I'm sad that you couldn't see the pecan pie. But maybe after dinner, I'll come back and stream it. Just like how to put it together. And then I'll just post the photo when it's baked. That's That can be an option. So it wouldn't take very long to roll out that dough. Nike, I love coffee. Me too. Okay, Doggo wants another pea pod. She's sitting so good. <laughs> the Panda Express near you does not know how to cook. Classic. You haven't been to a Panda Express in at least 18 years. Yeah, I don't think I've ever eaten there. Like, how are those places still open though if like almost all of us in here never eat there these are interesting peas so the shell is really thin which obviously gives you more yield for the actual pea I really like it Income tax was supposed to only be for the rich. And what happened to the world? Oh, local certain Chinese restaurant who has the best shrimp ramen noodle dish ever. That sounds amazing. What nutrition do you get from the peas? That's a good question, Thunder. I'm sure they're packed full of stuff. I know they have good protein in them. 
Let's see. Let's see what comes up. Green peas are a very good source of vitamin K, manganese, dietary fiber, vitamin B1, copper, vitamin C, phosphorus, and folate. Also vitamin B6, niacin, vitamin B2, molybdenum, molybdenum, zinc, protein, magnesium, iron, potassium, and choline, aka all of the things. Yeah, all of that in one P. What? Lullaboo is back, guys. Back with the massive host. Thanks, Lullaboo. That is much appreciated. Welcome in, guys. If you are here from Lullaboo's channel, I am just shelling some peas from both the garden and the farm. And we're gonna make some mushy peas. And the Cornish pasties are baking in the oven. You ran into cooking for noobs. Is she the biggest cooking streamer? I believe so, Bachelor. I, she's gotta be one of the first. Cause she, yeah, she definitely has like one of the biggest followings that I've ever seen or found on Twitch for cooking streamers. It's pretty crazy, hey? But she's done really, really well for herself. Is that more than cooking with Bobbish? I think, okay, so Bobbish started on YouTube though. So I don't think it counts because all of his YouTube followers just come on Twitch when he's on, right? I think that's a little bit different. But yeah, Babish has a lot as well. Like, didn't he have 13,000 people watching him the other day? And then we tried to rate him and it was like sub only. And we got sad. She's been on Twitch for three and a half years? Wow. See, she's put in some work. Like, I'm only five months in. Have I thought about doing YouTube? Yes. Oh, what did I? Ooh. That ish is organic. Look at that little guy. I was like, what did I put my hand in? A worm. Who ate our pee. Oh God, where'd he go? Did he fall in the peas? Ah, no, he's right there. I have thought about doing YouTube where I would just, holy, he literally destroyed that one. I would just take the videos I do on Twitch and just edit them to be shorter. That's a lot of work though. Like I don't have the time to do that right now, but it is definitely an option if I ever commit to that. There were cooking streamers on JTV. What's that? Never even heard of it. Give the worm to the noisy robins. I'm sure they would love me. Okay, what are we on our timer? Four minutes until we're halfway through the pasties. Pasties. I'm gonna say pasties forever. Just accept it, guys. Pasties. Pasties. No, Siri. Siri. Hi. Caitlin. Oh my god. She's wild. Hi, Caitlin. <laughs> what do you need today? Justin TV. It was what Twitch evolved from. Oh, okay. Someone has told me that previously. You can't promote Twitch on YouTube at all. Now we know. That's why I chose Twitch instead. I mean, with YouTube changing all of their rules as well for how you get paid out, I don't think it was worth my time to even do it. The struggle is real for those uh, small YouTube peeps. And Miss Obvious, how are you? Fallen Soul, welcome in. Thanks for the follow. How's it going? Siri spies on you. Honestly, my Siri is the craziest. She 
always wants to get in on the combo. Yay, Miss Obvious. I'm glad you said that because I don't feel so good about them. But I'm sure they'll be delicious. is the cleanup crew if any peas escape she's like i got this you just keep shelling i'll clean up you have a cheap samsung metro pcs phone that has super long battery life it doesn't run random apps fair enough all weird inside too but the pea was okay the peas were okay airplane mode works as well and you got nothing coming in Ginger Strongbow is really good. It's like a mix between ginger beer and cider. It has a pretty good ginger kick. Yeah, Betty brought it down to me. It's delicious. <laughs> One day you ask Siri what you buy, like a gift for a girlfriend for Valentine, and she say most clothes shops with condoms. Wow. Siri got a little bit too personal there, Fallen Soul. Look at this perfect little pod. All of the peas in the pod. Death, you finally got a win, dude. Congrats. No relation to the strong zero canned beverage? I don't think so. It's an English cider called Strongbow. It's like more of a dry cider, which is why I like it. It's time. Let's check it. Ooh. Yeah, definitely only halfway there, but look it. We got some, uh, Golden brown action just start in there. It's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna take the bottom tray and put it onto the top rack and put the top tray on the bottom. And now 25 more minutes. And we should be good. Okay, we have 25 minutes to get these peas done. So let's go, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Albus. It's getting you all hot and bothered. Keep your pasties in a safe place, though. Because we're cooking pasties. going on, Albus? How's the day? <laughs> you keep yours in a fanny pack. You're like Napoleon Dynamite. It's 
whip in your pasty, go to the fanny pack. <laughs> Missed the stream because you were trying a new game, but it wasn't good. So then you returned it. Well, at least you know now. Get that money back. He ain't happy. 24 minutes to get into Fortnite? Does nobody work anymore? Everyone just plays Fortnite or what? <laughs> New season came out today, so everyone's Oh. Playing. Tina, come and get your dinner. Come and get your food. God. <laughs> the movie's too good. I haven't watched it in a good couple of years. You have to watch that. You I'm down. That. I don't know, is it on Netflix? It's got to be on some sort of site. Oh, guys, and I guess we still have to make the gravy, too. I really hope I don't have to bump it up with the organic stuff that I have in the fridge, but we'll see how it tastes after I'm done shelling this. Because then all we have to do to the peas is... Just quickly boil or blanch them and then just mash them up with some butter and maybe a little bit of lemon juice and salt and pepper. That's it, my friends. <laughs> That's your wife's name. That's epic, Nike. Hey, chef, what's going on, man? Am I a pro chef? I am fallen. I've been cooking for eight years now. It's been good times, always. Hot and sweaty, ugh. Yeah, if it's uh, 25 here today, I can't even imagine what Vancouver has for weather. I don't miss it, man. The last one, the last pod to rule them all. Okay, so there's all of our shells. Definitely would have filled up the compost. We will just supplement with the shelled English peas that I picked up. Iron cuisine. And we were watching uh, Iron Chef last night. It's so good. Oh no, the peas are sprouting again. I don't think we can buy these ones anymore. Yeah, they're sprouting in the bag. What is this? Why are you like this? Yes. That's some BS straight up. Look at this. I'm not trying to grow peas. I'm just trying to eat them. I mean, it doesn't really seem to change the flavor. But it just looks really weird. I guess if we're mushing it up anyways, it doesn't really matter. But I am finding some gross ones in here. Don't want that. Dunzo. Costco peas, yeah. Brutal. They were good the first time we got them. Now I've been unhappy the last like three times, so that's it, I think. 
Our own peas will be ready anyways. But... Yee. Sammy, look at the beef fat today from the bones. Holy. Beef fat. Okay. Let's give a little tasty taste on our stock here. It's uh, looking pretty clear. So I'm thinking we'll have to bump up the flavor. But who knows? It smells really good though. Yeah, not that much flavor. Fair enough. We tried guys. If I would leave this overnight, it would probably get a little bit better. But marrow bones aren't even the best bones to use. You would want something more like a knuckle that has a lot of gelatin in it. That's how you get that really rich stock. What is going on? Okay, let's get a strainer out and another pot. And then we'll get to making the gravy. That gravy. It's all gravy, baby. This is the setup, strainer, pot, good to go. Just be careful you don't splash because it's really hot. And I just don't want all this stuff to fall ah, like that. Give it a little shake. Boom. <laughs> Watch out world. I think that's as far as we're going. What? Put water back in that and fill it back up. Or we can do that after. After. You're in Long Beach, pandas? Nice. Oh, you're in Kansas too, Nike? I didn't know that. Okay, so we're gonna bump up the flavor in here now. And this is still hot, right? So we can just mix in whatever beef paste we want. The one I use is really, really good. It's all organic and it's just called roasted beef stock. It actually just tastes like roasted beef. And the first ingredient on it, roasted beef. Yay. It's real. It's not just salt. You can tell because there's like Nice little fat globules in there too. I think we'll just whisk that in. And then we'll just take a little bit out to use for the gravy and then I'll just keep the rest of this probably in the freezer. Just keep it labeled for whatever I need. So I'll do a good spoonful like that. Now this is going to get really beefy. It's supposed to rain tomorrow through Tuesday. Well, that's going to feel good for you guys then. It's not Demi. I mean, it really looks like Demi, but it just is this. Better than Bouillon. I pick it up from Costco. It's just an organic roasted beef base. It 
looks really good. This is my favorite, like, prepared beef base. Plus the veg base and the chicken base is also awesome. Okay, now we will try this again. So look at the fat now on top. And some of that is from the base that we just put in. I don't think you can find a miner's paste in the store. I don't think so either. But you might be able to. We still need a bit more. Actually, let's not season this all. We'll just take some of it out. For a little bit of gravy, but first we need to start with a roux. So I'm just gonna take this small pot. <laughs> the delicious juice broth. That juicy juice. You got monsoon season in Arizona. Which for our roux. I'm gonna use the beef fat because that's also gonna give us that really nice beefy flavor. Nike, you're gonna put a pork loin, some cream and mushroom soup, and some dried pork gravy mix in water. Put it on low for like five to six hours. Good to go, man. That's like a great old school way to put something together that's like no fuss. Oh, wrong one. Is tormenting the dog. Okay, so whenever you're making a roux, you always want equal parts fat and flour, whether it's butter or beef fat or whatever type of fat you want. Typically, it's made with butter though, so I think something like that is going to be good. And then I'm just going to sprinkle flour over it, mix it in until it's pretty dry paste. start by melting your fat first. Oh yeah, there's some good flavor in there. And then we'll just ladle in our stock after that. And then we could bump it up with some bouillon if we want. And timing right now, we got 10 minutes left. So I think we'll start blanching the peas off. I wanna use so many pots though. Oh well. Oh wells. Your show is coming on mysteries at the museum. Cool. Okay, we're gonna fill this pot with hot water and salt and bring it up to a boil. Here. We're going to take our whisk, just start to whisk the flour in. Just going to be across the room, yeah, you still want to see the meat pockets. So that's a little bit too loose. Great. 
twist. And then let's bring our pot of stock over with a ladle. And then we'll start to whisk that in. I mean, you don't want any lumps, guys. That's why we got our whisk, and we'll just add a little bit at a time. Start with that, kind of make a paste. Mix it until it's pretty smooth. And then add a bit more. get on all of the edges of the pot as well because the roux likes to stick in there. Need to remember to stir it every now and then because as the roux cooks in that pot it's going to want to settle to the bottom just because it's heavier than the liquid so if you don't stir it it's going to settle to the bottom and just start to burn and then your whole stock or your sauce will be ruined and you'll have to start over gravy is a sauce it is sipping on um betty bought strongbow ginger flavored and it's actually really good not sure if you guys ever drink cider but it tastes like ginger beer and cider came together so it's really nice mashed potatoes is just about your favorite thing ever yeah it's so good potatoes and dairy why do you taste so good together? Can gravy be used for other dishes instead of just potatoes? Of course. You've only ever eaten gravy with smashed potatoes? Well, I'm pairing it with our meal today because I thought it'd be awesome to dip the pasty in it or kind of eat the pasty, pasty, pasty with it. This 
is almost like a white beef gravy. So typically you'll have a white gravy or a stock when you don't roast your bones ahead of time. But I think since we only had the marrow with not a lot of meat on there, is it just stayed a lot more white. Because we had more fat than let's say gelatin. I'm just gonna give this a try right now. It's actually really nice and beefy. Really natural tasting. I don't want it to taste fake. And I think this consistency is great. Okay, that is heating. Can you guys see that okay or should I do this? I just don't know how the glare is. It's not too bad, hey? Hello, pulpits. How are you, Sammy? It's been a while. There's different kinds of gravy. Some Italians call Sunday spaghetti sauce gravy. Fair enough. That makes sense. Gravy's good on a lot of stuff. Roasted chicken, steak, roast pork, whatever kind of vegetable you want. You got options, Thunder. There is options. Okay, so this is just coming up to a boil which means the roux is actually almost cooked out. Maybe I'll just put a little spoonful more of that beef base. And since it's so soft, like look at that. I don't think I'm going to dissolve it in water. Oh. It should just dissolve in here. Give that a little whisk. to go. A bowl of gravy, yes. May I order a bowl of gravy, please? Would you like fries with that? No, I'm good. Just the gravy. And we have 10 seconds left on our timer. So before that blows up, let's check it. Ho oh, ho! These, we're looking like some pasties now. Guys, I'm actually pretty proud of that right now. Please just tell me that it will be okay. The crust feels really good, so I think I'm just gonna turn the oven off and let them sit in there until our peas are ready, which our water is just coming up to a boil. Like this one is just perfection. Thanks guys, appreciate the love. You guys helped pull me through this, the pasty mess. Maybe it was so messy because I kept calling it pasty instead of pasty. The only thing is I really hope that the beef is tender. I don't know, it's gonna be a tough one, but we won't know until we try. Maybe the only way it would have cooked faster is if we cut the meat smaller. Dipped in gravy, glazed with gravy, drizzled with gravy. Yeah, we can go on. Okay. She's a boiling. Peas are going in and these will only take a minute or two to cook. So they are so delicate. Give it a stir if you want. 
We're almost there. Get a plate out. I think the way I want to plate this is put the gravy on the bottom of the plate in like a nice round circle. Put the peas on top. And I'm going to slice the pasty in half and kind of like prop it up on whatever is going on. I didn't, yeah, I don't know if it's going to be cooked, but it said 50 to 55 minutes. And all it said for the filling for the recipe diced. There was no size specification. But I think we'll be good. I mean, if you typically roast a little piece of turnip or carrot or potato for an hour, it's usually done by that point. Okay, so these are all floating. Best way to know if they are cooked, just try one. Couple of seconds more. That's called a pasty. Pasty. It's like pasta. I'm going to finish this off. Also, who's, uh, who's cooking right now? Is anyone on? Oh, chef's on. Chef's starting soon. We might have to go raid Chef. It's been a while. Or there's Domestic Dan. I've never seen him before. I think the peas are perfect. So now let's strain them. Put them back in the pot. You will not like what I'm seeing right now. QC guys, QC. At least the worm floats. Gross. Okay, now we can strain it. Steam it. Cooking but not streaming. Just easy ground beef mix. Nice, Death. Maple Woods on. He ain't cooking though. He's building a new PC. Sweet. Maybe we'll do Maple Wood then, Albus. I like to watch people build new computers. It's always fun. Computer door. Okay. How much butter, you guys asked? that much. Kind of break it up into cubes. And then to mash these, 
Maybe I'll just use a whisk. I'll just use the whisk from the gravy. Since I don't really have a potato masher. I don't know if this is gonna work though. Prior planning, guys. Maybe this thing? The claw. <laughs> Plunge it. They're starting to break up. We'll get there. not working. Being picky. Discord DM. Oh, I think I saw that earlier, Steampunk. Let's see if this will work. Just mash it against the side. Probably just salt and pepper. That's about it. But Brandon Potts, I think they're like Espina. Maybe not even. Rocher? Rocher? Canadian butter, I think, is more like American. good for plating. Netus, what's up? Use a bean smasher? What the heck is a bean smasher? Mm. Those are tasty. Okay, I'm going down. gonna take this guy. It's a hot, hot pockets. Definitely some hot pockets. So we're just gonna cut that guy in half, but I'm gonna go over to the stove, get a little plate on. West Virginia gay mother, welcome in. Yeah, potato masher, I know, I don't have one. And Betty's kitchen is torn apart upstairs, so I don't know where it's even located. So sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. So a little bit of gravy in the center here. Okay, let's do a little bit more than that. But look at the consistency of this, how it's not like just spreading out everywhere. And obviously, when we put the peas on, it's gonna make it spread out just a little bit more, which I think is perfect. Posh is ready to eat. She's like, what's up? What's going on? Good 
couple scoops of peas. How does that look, my peeps? And then we're going in for the slice. I'm just going to cut it right down the center. Nice. It's definitely hot. It actually looks pretty good. I would say we just have, I would say not enough filling because you don't want all of that air pocket, right? Which I, I guess we didn't make the pastry right. I don't know. All we're gonna do is place that there. Like that. And it might slide a little bit. That's it guys. Cornish pasty, mushy peas, beef gravy. Good to go. You are in time. Oh Matt, I just played it up. So I'm going to go take a photo and then we get to taste it. But I really feel like the beef is not done. The pastry looks great though. Nah, it didn't even say to carve slits. Like it's always just one piece of pastry. I'm just gonna eat with my hands. <laughs> you got a bit tipsy. I had a drink today too, oh Matt. Cheers, dude. Okay, we're going in. Let's get a little bit of everything in this bite, and yes, it is gonna be really hot. The veg is all cooked. Let me just sneak a piece of beef out. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. The meat's actually tender. Ah, uh, yeah. Now let's try a little bit of the peas with the gravy. Mm-hmm. The pasty with the gravy is going to be so good. I know it. We did good today, guys. My only picky thing, there's not enough filling. But I don't know how to fix that without tearing the pastry. Life is good, Omat. All is well, my dude. Okay. We are gonna go raid someone. Thanks everyone for the awesome stream, sticking with me through the pasty or pasty mess. Fill it with the peas and gravy, genius Alvis. Why didn't I think of that? I think that would be perfect. Okay, we're gonna go raid Maplewood. Ernadge, thanks for the follow. Last minute. Have a wonderful night, my peeps. Omat, oh, get to bed. And I will see you guys tomorrow. We are doing up a Eastern Canadian feast called a Labrador Sunday dinner. And I think it's going to be fun. We're cooking for Palsh tomorrow. Yay, Omat. Oh, okay. Have a good one, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for all the love today. Especially delusional with like all of the biddies. Thanks guys for the support. And also Lullaboo for the host. 
Bye.